Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray just proved what we already knew. They are the best duo in the NBA, and frankly, it's not very close at the moment. I mean, how are you supposed to stop this? Jokic sets a screen for Murray. The Heat blitz Murray off this pick, so he kicks it to Jokic behind the three-point line. By the way, this is someone who is shooting 47% from three in the playoffs, and that allows him to pump fake Bam before driving, and look at the finger roll. Or how about here, where on this handoff, all Murray needs is a slight lapse from Bam before rising up and knocking down the pull-up three. But forget about all of this for a second. Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray just made history, real history, with each of them recording 30-point triple-doubles in a finals game. Just to put into perspective how crazy this is, this is the first time two teammates have ever recorded a 30-point triple-double in any game in NBA history, and they did it in the finals. But before we talk more about the greatness that is this duo, even with them putting up historic numbers, the Nuggets still needed someone else to provide some kind of impact. And between the four of Gordon, Porter, Bruce Brown, and KCP, well, they struggled, combining for 24 points on eight of 26 shooting. So who decided to step up? Oh, that's right, rookie Christian Brown. Prior to this game, over the course of 16 playoff games, Christian Brown had scored 38 points at an average of 2.4 points per game. However, he decided Game 3 of the NBA Finals was the time to have the best game of his NBA career. And what initially started as Brown getting a couple of easy buckets off, well, passes like this from Yoke, turned into a level of confidence that I haven't seen from him all year, like on this play where Yoke Jokic has the ball in the post, and just look at the decisiveness of this cut and finish from Brown. But it gets even better, because after that bucket, the Heat bring the ball up the floor. Brown reads this Butler pass to perfection before getting out and throwing it down. But he wasn't done there, because with the Heat making a mini run to start the fourth, Brown gets backdoor first for an and one, before the best play of the game from any player, getting the ball in transition and attacking Jimmy Butler. Yes, Christian Brown put his head down and attacked attacked Jimmy Butler, capping off a 15-point game in which he shot 7 of 8 from the field to go along with some great defense as well. I mean, don't just take my word for it. I, I told him, you won us the game. Like you said, he's a winner and he won us the game. And to think the Nuggets not only got him at pick 21, but they have him under contract for another three years at three million a year. It's almost better business than today's sponsor. Extra. If you want a brand which makes high-end products without sacrificing high-end quality, Extra is the brand for you. From traditional options like their smooth bifold wallet to newer models like their Parliament wallet, which I've personally been using for the last few months, and I can say from experience that the ease at which I'm able to flip through cards whilst also having it effortlessly fit in my pockets has been a huge upgrade on my previous wallet. That's not all though. They've also come up with an innovative way to find your stolen or lost wallet with their wallet tracker card, which takes away the stress of worrying where that misplaced wallet might be. And over the next month, you can upgrade as well with up to 35% off items at checkout if you use the code SIXMAN. Now, if you want any idea as to how impossible the Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray two-man game is to defend, look no further than the first quarter of Game 3. Through the first five minutes of the game, Jamal had scored four field goals picking apart this Heat defense in the two-man game. And there was a reason for this. Right here, Jokic gives the ball to Marl. With Jokic rolling, Love is attached to him, which leaves Murray with a practice floater to make over the six foot two Gabe Vincent. 30 seconds later, once again, it's Jokic setting the screen. And once again, with Bam attached to Jokic, Murray has a free lane to operate. So obviously the solution is to shade over to Murray, right? Right? Well, in this play, Bam does exactly that. And watch what Murray does here really well. He takes that one extra dribble left, which creates a wide open lane for Jokic to float it in. A couple of minutes later, the Heat send two bodies at Murray again. And once again, Jamal does a great job at this time drawing Zeller away from Jokic, giving him time to float it in. But it gets even better, because what if the opposition decides to blitz Murray and then send a third body to Jokic? Can that work? Work? Well, that allows things like this to happen. Jokic, touch pass to Gordon. 
So that begs the question, how exactly are you supposed to stop these guys? Well, the answer so far is you can't, which is why the Nuggets are 14-4 and four in these playoffs and have won eight of their last nine games against the Heat, Suns, and Lakers. If you want an idea as to how dominant this Nuggets team has been, the last time a finals team had a net rating this high was, well, Take a guess. And can we all just for a second stop and realize that these are the current finals averages of Nikola Jokic. And he's doing this whilst playing 42 minutes a night. But just to go a step further, over the course of these playoffs, Nikola Jokic leads the NBA in total points, rebounds, and assists. Which for anyone wondering, would be the first time in NBA history that has ever happened. Not LeBron James, not Wilt Chamberlain. No one has ever done that. And I want to go back to game one just to show how ridiculous this man is. With the Heat making a comeback to start the fourth quarter, bringing it back to 10 points, over the next nine and a half minutes, Jokic scored or assisted on 18 of the Nuggets' 20 points. And I'm including these two free throws from AG, because look at the pass that got him those free throws. But that was nothing in comparison to Yoke going to work, hitting bucket after bucket. And it's not always the fourth quarter, but every single game, he has a quarter where he's not not just the best player on the floor, it looks like he's playing a completely different sport. In game two and three, that happened in the third quarters. I mean, even though they lost, let's not forget when he stripped Cody Zeller before running the floor, getting fouled about seven different times in the process, and flipping it in. Everyone wants to talk about how unathletic he is, but how many bigs can consistently lead the fast break and drop dimes or score at will? However, what got lost in this Nuggets win was how great their defense was. And a player who has consistently been great on that end is Aaron Gordon. In game one, the world got a glimpse of what AG can do offensively when you decide to throw smaller defenders on him. But that's nothing in comparison to his defensive workload all playoffs. Following game one, Gordon said this, definitely going to be sitting in my rocking chair when I'm 79 or 90 years old and talking to my kids about, yeah, back in the day, I locked these guys up. And well, whilst LeBron and KD fans didn't like that, if you look beyond the series numbers and look at the numbers of these three guys when Gordon was the primary defender, he might have a point. And it wasn't just those three either. Getting stops against Devin Booker, Anthony Edwards, and now Jimmy Butler. Although I think an even bigger testament to his defense has been how consistently Butler has looked to avoid him at all costs. Remember, this is the same Jimmy Butler that was doing this to Drew Holiday in round one. Now, despite not defending Jimmy all that much in this series because of the switches, he's still been locking up the heat consistently. Like here where Struess tries to take him off the dribble. Gordon forces him middle before reading the spin and his physicality is just too much. Or how about here where Jamal gets lost in the action, but the leaping ability of AG, well, we know all about that. And all playoffs long, he's morphed into what the Nuggets have needed. From guarding bigs to smalls to hitting threes in game four against the Lakers or bullying smaller defenders in game one versus Miami, Aaron Gordon is a true Swiss army knife and a huge reason the Denver Nuggets continue to dominate in these playoffs.